When I was growing up and I came home from school, there was always something on the kitchen counter baked. Not necessarily from that day. We might have gone one or two days. My mother had four kids and, uh, well, my parents had four kids and uh, they were always hungry. So my mother was always looking for good recipes, but recipes that, um, you know, would stretch a lot and wouldn't cost a lot. So this is my mom's banana ripple cake. We're going to start out with a larger loaf pan than normal. This is a 13 by four and a half um, bread pan, readily available anywhere. If you don't have this size, you can use a regular loaf pan and your yield will be one loaf pan and maybe some smaller pan on the side because you don't want to fill this to the top. This will raise, rise. Now what I did was I greased and floured it. Then I put parchment paper in it just across the long end. And I used a Martha Stewart trick of putting these clips on the side. That way when I'm pouring the cake in, this paper is not getting in my way. I'll remove those before I put them in the oven. And, but I'll put this aside now. So we'll start on the cake. Also, if you have a pan like this, which I think is just an absolutely fun spring form pan, this is a 12 by four and a half. And I, may, I have made this cake in this pan and it comes out very good too. So either one of those pans or whatever. Now, to start, we're gonna make the ripple portion. What I did was I took four ounces of mini semi-sweet chocolate bits and four ounces of, and a quarter of a cup of water. And I put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds. And then when it came out, I just whisked it around until it was smooth. So we're gonna set that aside because we don't need that right now. So we'll start with our flour mixture, which is four, uh, two cups of flour. And then I have three quarters of a teaspoon of baking soda, a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and a half a teaspoon of salt. And I'll just whisk that up and get it blended. And we'll put that to the side for the moment. In my mixer bowl, I'm gonna take one stick or one half cup of softened butter. And I'm going to put that on the mixer and get it started. I'm going to cream it nicely. And as it's creaming, I'm going to add one cup of sugar. To that, I'm going to add two egg yolks. I've separated the uh, eggs and I've put the, the whites off to the side. And now I'll blend those in. And one teaspoon of vanilla. that sit there for a minute. In this small bowl, I took two regular sized bananas, sort of on the ripe side, you don't want them too green, and I just sliced them up, and I'm going to take a fork, and I'm going to mash them up. Just a rough mash, you could use a potato masher if you want to, or whatever, so that bananas are not falling all over the place. Okay, that's a nice rough mash for the moment. And then I'm gonna add one third of a cup of sour cream. This cake, like I said, I've been eating this cake since I was a kid. And I always loved this cake when my mom made it. Made the house smell great and it just tastes terrific. So we'll mix those two together. 
And what we're going to do with these two mixtures now is I'm going to alternately add the flour, the bananas, the flour to the egg and butter mixture in there. And that will make our batter. It's a very easy cake to make, very easy. And then, once we've got the batter going, I am going to add into it a half a cup of mini chocolate chips. This is one part my mother never did, but I'm such a fan of chocolate, I tend to throw it into everything I possibly can. And then a third of a cup of maraschino cherries that I drained, rinsed, excuse me, dried on a paper towel, and then I cut them into quarter pieces. So there's that. And now what I will do is I will put in some of the flour, approximately one half. And give that a blend. Turn that off for a minute. Now I'm going to add all of the banana mixture. Back on the mixer. And blend it up well. Now the balance of the flour. Dump it in there and blend that up. There we go. We can get rid of our paddle attachment. And don't worry if you have pieces of banana in there. That's great. You know, this is a banana ripple cake after all. And then in goes the chocolate. And in go the cherries. And you're probably saying, you separated those eggs and you said you're going to use them. The egg whites. I am. As soon as I finish blending this in, so here is my egg whites, and I'm going to use one of my favorite tools, I love this thing, and a half a cup of sugar. So first I'm going to get these to soft peaks. Not necessarily soft peaks, just frothy, and I'm going to add some of the sugar. the rest of the sugar. Good 
getting really hard to, to do this. Look, it takes a little muscle. all over the table just so it's like meringue looking it's like marshmallowy I'm gonna add that in and our oven is on at 350 degrees just fold it in Almost there. Okay, I don't see any more whites. Get our pan, and I am going to put it on a cookie sheet because I don't want to take any chances that it might get all over my oven, just in case a little bit kind of falls over the side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about one third of this batter. And I'm going to spread it across the bottom. It looks so festive with those cherries and the chocolate bits. It's a pretty cake when it slices. Okay, now I'm going to get my ripple. And I'm just going to drizzle some of the chocolate. You'll notice this chocolate is, is rather, uh, you know, wet. It's not, you know, thick. That's fine. Believe me. Okay. Now, another third of our batter. And the rest up, we've got to spread it out a little bit. And then we'll put the rest of our chocolate on top. Now, the rest of our cake batter. Lost some on there. I'll have to get that off of there. I don't want it to burn onto the pan. Okay. Now, I guess I'll use this. Get that off of there. Now I'm going to take off these clips because I don't need these anymore. And this is going into my 350 degree oven for about at least an hour, uh, anywhere up to like 70 minutes. I would start checking it around 55 just because of your oven. You know, toothpick inserted. Although, you're going to see some of the chocolate will remain kind of uh, 
gooey, so you might get the chocolate coming out on the toothpick, but you'll see what I mean. It'll be nice and brown on top. So here we go into the oven. Here's our banana ripple cake out of the oven. It's very, very hot. Now I can't do anything with it right now. It's going to have to sit in the pan like this for about 15 minutes. Then I will turn it out, remove the parchment paper, and I've got to let it cool to room temperature before I can cut it and show it to you. Um, I just used a skewer, went in, came out clean, it's done. So I guess I'll see you back when it cools down. It's been about 20 minutes. It's cool enough for me to handle. It's still very warm. But now we're gonna take it out, invert it onto a rack, take the pan off, peel the parchment off. I'm gonna just give it a roll over. And now that has got to sit till it's completely cool before I even think about cutting it. Our cake is now cool and we can cut into it and take it off the rack and put it on a serving dish. And I'm going to use a serrated knife. And there you go. I don't know if you can see the ripples in there, but there's my mother's banana ripple 